Hello students. In my last class, I have discussed about Kirchhoff's rules, junction rule and uh, loop rule. Now, in this class, a very important one that application of Kirchhoff rules can be done here. Expression for the balanced condition of the Wheatstone split. Let me write it. Expression for or you can say condition condition for balance of a Wheatstone's bridge first of all let us write the diagram of Wheatstone's bridge I will call this quadrilateral as A B, C and D and the four resistors are marked as P, Q, R and S. Along the diagonal BD connect a galvanometer. So between the points B and D along the diagonal we should connect a galvanometer. A galvanometer is a device which detects the current. Between A and C we have we are connecting a source which is having a EMF of E, we are connecting a source, a voltage source here along AC externally. Now this is the arrangement of Wheatstone spreads. Now from the cell or a battery, current I, the main current I is leaving here and the same current I is entering into this junction A. So at the junction A, at the junction A, current I splits into I1 and I2. Main current I is splitting into I1 and I2. I1 is flowing through this P and I2 is flowing through the resistor Q. The same current I1 is entering into the junction B. In, entering into the junction B now. Now again the current I1 is splitting into I3 here and here I will call the current as IG that is current flowing through the galvanometer. Now at this junction let us apply the Kirchhoff's junction rule. So at the junction B by Kirchhoff's junction rule you can say that the sum of the current which is incoming I1 is the current which is flowing into the junction therefore this is I1 is equal to sum of the currents which are leaving the junction that is I3 plus IG. So this is I3 plus IG. I will mark this as equation number 1. Now, here at the junction A, a current I2 is flowing into this resistor. The same current I2 is now entering into the junction D and here a current IG which is flowing through the galvanometer, this, this current is also entering into the junction D now. So that if I write this is I4 the current which is flowing through the resistor S is I4. Let us apply Kirchhoff's rule at this junction. So at the junction, at the junction D, at the junction D, applying Kirchhoff's rules, IG plus I2, the currents which are flowing into the junction, IG plus I2 or I2 plus IG, that should be equal to the current which is leaving the junction is I4. So this is I4 and the current again recombines here. Therefore, the main current I is again flowing into the cell. Now mark this as equation 2. Now very importantly, we should apply Kirchhoff's loop rule across this loop, a closed loop A. B, D, A. So I will start with A, then A, B, D, A. This is a loop, complete loop. By applying, by applying Kirchhoff's loop rule, yes. Here current is I1 and resistance is P. So I1 into P. 
and we are in the same direction as current. So therefore, we should consider sign convention as negative here. So minus I1P. I will write it here. This is minus I1P. Next, from B to D. From B to D. Current is IG and resistance of the galvanometer is G. Now, here, this, we are in the same direction as current. Therefore, IG into G. The sign convention is again negative here. So, minus of IG into G. Minus of IG into G. Where G is the galvanometer resistance. Now, we will come back to this point. D to A. So, DA. Along DA, the current I2. Current I2 is in opposite direction. So, from D to A, if I multiply I2 and Q. I2 into Q. This convention is positive. So, I2 into Q should be considered as positive here. So, this is plus I2 into Q and this is equal to 0. So, we got an expression as minus I1P minus I2G plus I2Q is equal to 0. So, this is the equation we got for the loop A, B, D, A. Now, another loop B, C, D, B. So, we are in this direction. B, C, D, B. So, for the loop, this is A, B, D, A. Now, by Kirchhoff's loop rule, for the loop B C D B B C D B B C the current is I3 and resistances are therefore I3 into R and again we are in the same direction as current therefore this is negative minus I3 into R here from C to D, current is I4 and resistance is S, but we are in the opposite direction to the current, therefore this sign convention is positive. So, I4 into S plus I4 into S. And here, from D to B, the current is IG and the galvanometer resistance is G, therefore IG into G and again we are in the opposite direction to the current. From D to B, we are in the opposite direction to the current. Therefore, this sign is also positive. Therefore, this is plus IG G equal to 0. In Wheatstone's bridge, our interest is a one special case that is a balanced condition of the Wheatstone's bridge. For the balanced condition of the Wheatstone's bridge, the condition is Ig equal to 0. So, we have to make the current flowing through the galvanometer to be 0. When galvanometer shows the null deflection or 0 deflection, we can say that current through the galvanometer is 0. So, this case, in this case, we can say that the bridge is balanced. When Ig equal to 0, that is current flowing through the galvanometer is 0, the bridge is said to be balanced. So, let us apply this condition to those equations. Therefore, applying, I will call this as equation 1, this is equation, this is equation 3 and this is equation 4. For the balanced condition of Wheatstone's bridge, Ig equal to 0. Current flowing through the galvanometer is 0. Now, this condition is applied in equations 3 and 4. So, using Ig equal to 0 in equation 3 and 4. First, I will write what happens to the equation 3. Minus I1P minus IG into G. This IG is equal to 0. Therefore, the second term vanishes. So, what remains is minus I1P 
and this term i2 into q plus i2 q equal to 0. So, by this equation you can write i1 p is equal to i2 q. We can write that i1 p is equal to i2 q. Next, applying uh, the, this condition ig equal to 0 in the equation 4. What happens to the equation now? Minus i3 r plus this is i4 into s plus ig is equal to 0. Therefore, the third term vanishes. What remains is minus i3 r plus i4 s equal to 0. Again, let us rearrange this equation and you can write this as i3 r is equal to i4 s. So, I will call this as equation number 5, this as equation number 6. Now, in equation 1 itself, by applying Kirchhoff's law at this, this junction, we had written i1 is equal to i3 plus ig and the also at this junction d i2 is i2 plus ig is equal to i4 but for the balanced condition we know that ig is equal to 0 therefore applying this condition in that equation you will get ig equal to 0 and ig equal to 0 therefore this equation implies if ig make if ig is made as 0 i1 equal to i3 i1 equal to i3 and here if i make ig equal to 0 i2 is equal to i4 so we get a very important thing i1 equal to i3 and i2 equal to i4 so that if i apply this i1 equal to i3 and i2 equal to i4 in this equation in this equation equation number 6 so i let us replace i3 by i1 and i4 by i2 so from equation 6 i'm replacing i3 by i1 i1 r is equal to i2 s we will call this as equation number 7 now if i observe equation 5 and equation 7 equation 5 and equation 7 uh, if i divide them what i will get is i will write equation 5 first i1 p divided by this is i1 r equals i2 q divided by this one i2 s now we can cancel i1 and i1 and i2 and i2 so that we get a very important thing here i will write it here p by q equal to r by s so this condition p by q is equal to r by s this is the condition for balance of a wheatstone's bridge p by q is equal to r by s so for obtaining this balanced condition p by q is equal to r by s we have used this one ig equal to 0 that is current through the galvanometer equal to 0 so when the current through the galvanometer is equal to 0 then the bridge is said to be balanced and the balanced condition is written as p by q is equal to r by s and this derivation is very important and this will be asked for 5 marks in your examination. Next, the practical application of this Wheatstone's bridge is a meter bridge. A meter bridge. Meter bridge consists of a wire of uniform thickness which is stretched and clamped between a metal strips. The metal strips has two gaps one is a left gap and the other one is a right gap and across the left gap we should connect a resistance a resistor r which is of unknown the value of this resistance is not known and here we have to connect a standard resistance s and here we have a scale and 
and this is connected to a external source with a key this is a key this is a b c and from the point b the galvanometer is connected with a sliding contact this is d this length of a wire is l and this wire is of 1 meter length 1 meter length and you can write this as 100 minus of l centimeter if this is l centimeter then the remaining length will be 100 minus of l centimeter now in order to find out the resistance of this resistor the unknown resistance the unknown resistance is obtained using a, a principle of Wheatstone spreads I mean balanced condition of Wheatstone spreads if we make the current through this galvanometer to be zero at somewhere at this point this portion the length of the portion AD he is written as L centimeter and the remaining length DC is written as 100 minus of L centimeter. Therefore, to find this resistance of unknown resistor, the condition is R unknown is equal to S divided S into L divided by 100 minus of L. S into L divided by 100 minus of L. So, if we know the resistance S, the value of resistance S if we know this resistance, we can find out the resistance of this using a meter bit. So, this is the practical application of a Wheatstone's network. Yes, the first derivation that, uh, that I have done in this class, that is a balanced condition of a Wheatstone's bridge. So, that will be asked for 5 marks in your examination and this will be useful in your uh, laboratory classes, uh, practical classes. The condition is R unknown is equal to S into L divided by 100 minus of L, where that L is called as balancing length this L is called a balancing length. Balancing length is obtained by making the current through the galvanometer is equal to 0. Thank you.